And I intend to show the world exactly who I am and what I can do. I must not fail. You won't. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 worst Hollywood remakes. Uh, now, you see, that's exactly my point. You said nobody had been here for a couple of weeks. Now there's this couple came by, and uh, yeah. they, they didn't know you were open. Yeah. Well, as you say, old habits die hard. For this list, we'll be looking at remakes that are missing all the things that made their original counterparts so amazing. These films demonstrate how a bigger budget, modern movie stars, and technological advances only get you so far. Which of these remakes is the worst? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, A Nightmare on Elm Street. I set an alarm. Yes, you did. In your dream. The story of Freddy Krueger has had a faithful following since Robert Englund first sported the razor glove and red and green sweater we've grown to love. Yet it's England's undeniable charm that largely made the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise so beloved by fans. Please God. This is God. <laughs> that said, a recasting for the 2010 remake just didn't work, despite the best efforts of Jackie Earl Haley. We did not hunt him. We were protecting him. From what? From him, from what he did to you. From what you kids told us he did. We were to. five! This is a horror icon that can't hide behind a mask, and England's legacy simply loomed too large for A Nightmare on Elm Street 2010 to stand on its own two feet. I don't know, Jesse. You think you could turn back time? Number 19, Swept Away. Madonna's film resume is full of interesting failures and discussion-provoking performances. <laughs> you lost me. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> 2002's Swept Away sort of exemplifies both ends of this spectrum, while also serving as sort of a coda to the material girl's attempts at acting. What have you been doing in that? I'm a fisherman, not a sailor. It's my sweater, and because I'm a fisherman, I go fishing in it, so it smells of fishes. Fascinating. This remake of a much beloved Italian film of the same name was the lowest rated movie of Madonna's career on the silver screen, with a 5% score on Rotten Tomatoes. It's not funny anymore. I want to go back to the yacht. Not even the directing talents of her then husband, Guy Ritchie, could save Swept Away from being an embarrassing black eye for nearly everyone involved with the production. I don't want to go back. I don't want to be tested. If you love me, you can love me anywhere. Number 18, Jacob's Ladder. This 2019 film was so poorly received at the time of its release that many fans of the 1990 original aren't even aware it exists. You better keep your mouth shut. What'd you say? This is probably a good thing, however, as the OG Jacob's Ladder still possesses a lot of power today. It should have been routine. Simple snatch and grab of an enemy combatant. The minute we got in that village, it felt wrong. The cast of the 2019 iteration certainly seemed to try their best, but the original hallucinogenic imagery, not to mention the standout performance from Tim Robbins, makes it something of a cult classic. It targets traumatic memories. The vets, they call it the ladder. The VA had been prescribing it for some time for PTSD, but it got shelved, uh, bad side effects. And it was this attention to detail and execution that felt sorely lacking in Jacob's Ladder 2019. Sometimes it's best just to stick with the original. I think people may be getting killed because of this. Come on. Number 17, The Wolfman. The moon is full tonight and uh, I prefer that you stay inside. How does a studio remake a character as iconic as the Wolfman? If you said strip it all of its emotional grit and replace it with sanitary CGI effects and stilted acting, then you're doing it wrong. Don't! Don't! <laughs> Lawrence, you know me. You know me, remember me, look at me. Unfortunately, this was the approach taken with The Wolfman 2010, a film that was up against a pedigree of genre-defining special effects and ultimately fell flat. <laughs> there are things to like about the performance of Benicio Del Toro, sure, but there are also tons of other great Wolfman movies out there, movies with more believable werewolves. This one just couldn't get the job done. 
Wounds are so terrible that only something human would seem capable of such wanton malevolence. Number 16, Total Recall. If I'm not me, then who the hell am I? The original Total Recall was a unique film without their characters and even crazier effects. You paid to be a secret agent. Bullshit. It's coincidence. It also boasted some seriously impressive special effects for the time, such as Arnold Schwarzenegger's insanely memorable head expansion out there on Mars. By comparison, it's not out of the question for fans to forget that the 2012 Total Recall remake even happened. So disappointing were the final results. You've got to be kidding me. This remake shared little in common with the original's tone or story, and served only as a boring and by-the-numbers sci-fi slog. Start the reactor and send this one on a permanent vacation. It was a fake. You know what? Sorry. Number 15, Old Boy. You knock him out, champ. I will, sir. Bob and Weave. Sometimes, when filmmakers decide to remake a film, it leaves observers and filmgoers scratching their heads. This is one of those cases. Slow down a second. Stop! Get the f off of me. Hey! <coughs> Leave the lady alone! It can be a daunting task, attempting to successfully adapt a film from another country into another language and culture. Perhaps too daunting, in fact, for director Spike Lee and his 2013 take on Old Boy, which largely fell upon a disinterested and skeptical audience upon release. Refusal of the challenge brings the same result as failure. You stay a fugitive from justice. You get no reward, no closure. Lee certainly knows how to make films, his own films, with a unique and very personal narrative voice. His old boy, however, is best left forgotten. Kill me, please. Please kill me. <laughs> Number 14, Red Dawn. It wasn't the PG-13 rating that hampered this 2012 remake of Red Dawn. This is war. In fact, the original from 1984 was actually the first film ever to have this rating. Instead, this take on the John Milius directed classic failed on its own merit by just being a poor movie. I want you to go to war and stop this piece of shit or die trying. The visceral stakes of the original feel lost in the 2012 iteration and the film feels largely toothless and unexciting. When I was overseas, we were the good guys. We enforced order. Well, now we're the bad guys. The original Red Dawn pushed its brand new rating to the limit back in 84 and contained interesting thematic subtext about world politics, survival, and the death of innocence. Listen to me. We are, we are all that's left. Somebody's gotta, someone's gotta live. Somebody's gotta make it. Meanwhile, not even Chris Hemsworth's star could save Red Dawn 2012 from failing at the box office. But you've been putting everyone here at risk. Eric is so out there, Jed. And what happens when you get caught? Because if it were me, you wouldn't keep looking, right? No, not if it meant putting everyone else's ass on the line. Number 13, Clash of the Titans. I will unleash the croc. Are the CGI effects of the 2010 Clash of the Titans terrible? Well, no, not really. The 3D conversion, however, was another matter. We all heard what the witches said. But we can prove them wrong. The film's director, Louis Leterrier, even referred to it as famously rushed and famously horrible, which already puts this remake in some hot water. This is where the Kraken defeated the Titans. It's what Argus will look like when we fail. Add to the fact that the original from 1981 was such a showcase for the special effects icon Ray Harryhausen, and it's basically a recipe for disappointment. Release the Kraken! This didn't stop a sequel, Wrath of the Titans, from being released in 2012, but we stick by our guns with this one. Just don't bother. Number 12, The Fog. You know the difference between Flotsam and Jetsam? Macon. Some people get washed up on shore. Some bob around at sea forever. John Carpenter is one of the most respective creative voices in the horror world, yet this hasn't stopped many from attempting to remake the man's films, with largely disappointing results. Hey, Spooner, you see any fog out there? No fog out here, ladies, see any fog out here? Uh, I don't see any fog out there. The 2005 iteration of The Fog is definitely one of those remakes, an effort that fails on its own merit, 
while also failing as a tribute to Carpenter. The remake doesn't possess the star power of the original, and Carpenter's signature style is absent and definitely missed. So, what is it this time? A swarm of locusts? A tornado, maybe? Uh-huh. No. Just fog. They call them classics for a reason, after all. And the fog should have stayed in the 80s, where it belonged. <laughs> Number 11, Arthur. The role of the original Arthur was epitomized by the incomparable Dudley Moore. Will you marry me, Susan? Take the weekend if you want. Yes. Congratulations. However, Russell Brand was still a hot commodity in 2011, so it was decided that a remake of the 1981 classic was going to be a thing. Did it work, you may ask? Well, it's on this list, so of course it didn't work. Only one man can save civilization, and that man is Arthur Buck Justice! Audiences were already beginning to tire of Brand, and his comedic talents just couldn't fill Moore's shoes in the iconic role. Whoa, this is depressing. It's like unhappy hour. It is, I don't like it in here. This is making me want to drink more. The original film hinges upon Moore's likability as an actor, as well as his ability to balance comedy with drama. Brand, however, just couldn't get the job done. Even you deserve better than this. Number 10, The Day the Earth Stood Still. It isn't exactly a bad idea to take a classic, yet older genre film, and update it for the modern day. Why have you come to our planet? That said, The Day the Earth Stood Still could have worked as a film, and it did certainly make profit. It's also important, however, to balance our story and spectacle, yet the creative hands behind this film didn't seem to get that memo. Negative, I've lost Link! I've lost control! Who's in control of the aircraft then? The Day the Earth Stood Still 2008 is big, loud and grandiose. A perfect IMAX seat filler for sure. Stop the car. What? Stop the car! But it could have been so much more. A nice bridge between sci-fi's past and its present. Instead, this remake just feels empty inside. And watching it just felt like eating unsatisfying and unhealthy junk food can't risk the survival of this planet for the sake of one species. What are you saying? If the Earth dies, you die. If you die, the Earth survives. Number 9, Around the World in 80 Days The stories of Jules Verne have been adapted for decades now, bringing to the screen high adventure and unbridled excitement. What are you doing? If you decrease the overall weight, then that's not going to work. Yes, it is. And then there's 2004's Around the World in 80 Days, which was a movie. Yep, it certainly was a movie. This cane is not as it appears. If I depress this button here, it will deploy a weapon far more deadly than yours. Actually, it was a Razzie-nominated movie, one that possessed very little in common with Verne's original story. I'm not gonna lie to you. That's gonna happen about half the time. And it definitely couldn't compare to the prior film adaptations, such as the Academy Award winning iteration from 1956. Now we understand those were some pretty big shoes to fill, but Around the World in 80 Days didn't even seem to try. I wouldn't say he's winning, but uh, I think he's doing all right. Number 8 Dinner for Schmucks. Dinner for Schmucks could have benefited from the fact that its source material, 1998 Le Diner de Chon, possessed a comparatively lower commercial profile. Yet the remake largely wastes its talented cast with a huge swing and a miss. Does that guy look sort of familiar? I'll give you a hint. He wrote the Bible. Is it Jesus? Yes! You know your stuff! Steve Carell's performance feels uncomfortably loud and exaggerated, although his pairing with Paul Rudd felt like it could have been onto something unique. I won this trophy fair and square. Barry, you don't want that trophy. I've never won a trophy before. Yeah, I know, but it rip... You know what? Keep the trophy. The plot of an executive forced to find himself an idiot to take to a mean-spirited dinner is something of a tightrope, upon which Dinner for Schmucks unfortunately couldn't balance. This one just falls flat. What part of No More do you not understand? Number 7, The Invasion. At what point has an idea just been mined too many times? One thing's for sure, it ain't from around here. 
The Invasion serves as an interesting answer to that question. Another reboot of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and easily the worst to date. <laughs> The crippling paranoia of the 70s version is missing, as is the classy, foreboding menace of the original. Not even the overall weirdness that was Abel Ferrara's 1993 version is here. Don't show emotion. Then they can't tell who's who. Instead, the invasion just proved to be soulless and boring. Which is a shame, because the source material just writes itself, doesn't it? You know it's true. <laughs> Our world is a better world. Number six, Planet of the Apes. Is there a soul in there? Although 2011's Rise of the Planet of the Apes managed to save this classic franchise from extinction, this was still a long way off back in 2001. Take your stinking hands off me, you damn dirty human! Here, it was Tim Burton's turn to mess with our minds and release a remake that just felt so weird. Can't we all just... Get along. Mark Wahlberg is woefully miscast as the lead, as was the model slash athlete Estella Warren. Meanwhile, Tim Roth chewed scenery for all it was worth. There was a twist ending that left fans baffled, and yeah, it was a mess. Not even Paul Giamatti or the undeniably excellent makeup could save this one. Take it easy, little fella. I'm not gonna hurt you. Number five. Godzilla. We're in his mouth. We're in his mouth. The Godzilla franchise is another IP that's thankfully earned a new lease on life, thanks to films like 2016's Shin Godzilla and the MonsterVerse. And it's a good thing too, because it almost all came crashing down in 1998. What, what do we do? Running would be a good idea. Let's go! That's because The King of Monsters was unfortunately put into the creative hands of disaster movie king Roland Emmerich. Emmerich basically turned the G-Man into a Jurassic Park ripoff for the summer blockbuster season, complete with a lame tie-in tune from Puff Daddy and Jimmy Page. I love you dearly, and not sincerely, but you annoy me, you can't avoid me, I'm here to stay. The 98 Godzilla was so bad that the creature was actually canonized and renamed Zilla in Japan. You know, just to avoid any confusion with the real McCoy. Number 4. The Wicker Man on one hand, there's no denying that director Neil Levute's 2006 reimagining of Robin Hardy's classic The Wicker Man was some kind of what the F fever dream. What is it? What's wrong, sister? Oh! Don't be frightened. There's also the lunacy of Nicolas Cage in the lead, complete with yelling, screaming, and enough running in a bear suit to make you question your sanity. How to get burned? I... How to get burned? How to get burned? However, as a horror film, it fails in tremendous fashion, severing the palpable atmosphere of the original and relying on cheap jumps to frighten its audience. Forgive me. Forgive me for... I'm, I'm lost. Take our advice. Just watch the 70s original instead and save this one for Bad Movie Night. Look, I'm trying to trust you here, but every time I turn my head, there's something that doesn't make any sense. Number three, Rollerball. It seems like a foregone conclusion that any film receiving the Hollywood remake treatment is going to have the lion's share of its thematics muted for wide release. This remake of Rollerball, however, was on another level of dumb. We got a fox in the box! A fox in the box! Norman Jewison's original thrived upon its biting social commentary about class, money, power, and social standing. It uses the actual sport of rollerball as a backdrop for these themes. They're afraid of you, Jonathan. All the way to the top, they are. Rollerball 2002, however, largely forgoes this approach and instead takes the path of many other would-be blockbusters. Oh, we got ourselves a motorcycle race here! This one is just full of action and noise, an ugly film where the brain is basically dead on arrival. This may be getting out of hand. Maybe we should call the whole thing off. Number two, The Pink Panther. 
It appears, on paper at least, that the casting of Steve Martin as Inspector Jacques Clouseau for a new Pink Panther movie could have been inspired. <laughs> This is despite Peter Sellers basically embodying the role for so many years. Have some coffee, Inspector. You know, you two could save yourself a lot of trouble if you would tell me where the jewel is. Unfortunately, both Martin and The Pink Panther 2006 prefer to grab for low-hanging fruit instead of reaching for the stars. Inspector! Do you know if the killer was a man or a woman? Well, of course I know that. What else is there? A kitten? The humour here is disappointingly lowbrow and unworthy of Sellers' legacy, yet someone out there seemed to be watching The Pink Panther, because this cringe fest actually managed to mine further depths with an even worse sequel in 2009. You continue to surprise me, Inspector. Get used to it, Ponton. With me, surprises are rarely unexpected. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Psycho The decision for director Gus Van Sant to release a shot-for-shot -shot remake of Psycho in 1998 was one that was met with some pretty strong reactions. She stopped here? No one stopped here for a couple weeks. You mind looking at the picture before committing yourself? The question of why came up again and again, and honestly, we're still asking ourselves today about why Psycho 98 exists. Ah, uh, but it's no use in dwelling on our losses. No, we just keep on lighting the lights and following the formalities. It isn't as if Anne Heche and especially Vince Vaughn weren't game to try and step into the shoes of Janet Lee and Anthony Perkins. <laughs> it's just that Van Sant tries so hard to replicate Alfred Hitchcock's blocking and set pieces that we're constantly reminded of Hitch's superior film. So why watch this one? Why don't you just get in your car and drive away from here, okay? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.